Well, hello and welcome back to another installment. We are studying for the technician license exam and we are now in sub element or element three, sub element A. And we're going to go ahead and start off. Why do VHF signal strength sometimes vary greatly when the antenna is moved only a few feet? The correct answer for this is C, multi-path propagation cancels or reinforces signals. And what that means is signals could bounce off of buildings, off of walls, and so that multi-path propagation, as they meet, if they have a, a trough that meets the peak, they cancel each other out. Or if you have two peaks that meet, they get a little bit bigger. That's how it reinforces the signal. So that is the correct answer for question one. Question two, what is the effect of vegetation on UHF and microwave signals? The correct answer is absorption. As the frequency goes up, it makes it harder and harder to break through that vegetation, such as trees and perhaps some really tall grass that you might find a car behind if you were to mow it. What antenna polarization is normally used for long distance CW and SSB contacts on the VHF and UHF bands? Well, on HF, a lot of times it's horizontal and you can get away with vertical polarization, but since you're uh, using VHF and UHF, that is definitely going to be horizontal. So the correct answer is horizontal. Your antenna is going to be parallel with the horizon. Question number four, what happens when antennas at opposite ends of a VHF or UHF line of sight radio link are not using the same polarization? So if one person is using a horizontal and the other person is using a vertical, the way that the electromagnetic waves are coming out, they're going to hit this antenna at a different angle than it's expecting. And so your received signal strength is going to be reduced. Now, how much it's reduced really depends on a lot of factors. But if they were really close to each other, I've read somewhere that it's about a 20 decibel loss, which is significant. So you want them to be aligned, the same polarization. So received signal strength is reduced. Question five, when using a directional antenna, how might your station be able to communicate with a distant repeater if buildings or obstructions are blocking the direct lines of sight, of path, of sight path? Well, you want to try to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater. Now, I've had this happen on a fox hunt. On the fox hunt, we pointed it straight at a wall. And the signal got stronger. Well, we started going in the wrong direction. Come to find out they were actually behind us at that point. The wall was reflecting their signal. So try to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater. And a directional antenna might be a Yagi type. What is the meaning of the term picket fencing? This is a rapid flutter on mobile signals due to multi-path propagation. If you've ever driven through the mountains and listened to FM radio, you might have heard this sound before, where the station kind of flutters, and, and, and that's the best thing you can call it, is a flutter. It's because the mountains are blocking it, and then you're getting some multi-path propagation from it bouncing off of mountains and buildings and such. It happens the further away you get from that station, too. What weather condition might decrease range at microwave frequencies? Now, remember, microwave frequencies, they have a hard, hard time making that penetration. So, it's precipitation. Now... If you have, this is, this is from, got to be from your personal experience, the way you can remember this is if you have a satellite TV, what happens when it storms? Well, there's precipitation 
and clouds are also made of water, lots and lots of water, so they block those signals from coming down. The correct answer is precipitation. Question number eight. What is likely, what is a likely cause of irregular fading of signals propagated by the ionosphere? You have the same, th these are basically all saying the same thing. You have a random combining of signals arriving via different paths. So if they are propagated by the ionosphere and reflected back, you might be getting a random combining of those signals from different paths. And that is going to cause a, a strange and irregular fading. Question number nine. Which of the following results from the fact that signals propagated by the ionosphere are elliptically polarized? Okay, so the answer choice is either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. So occasionally the signals get a little crazy and they're not exactly flying straight, they get elliptically polarized, so they're spinning just a smidge, it seems. So you can get away with either a vertical or a horizontal polarized antenna. And that is definitely true on HF. And you may find that a vertical will perform a little better than a horizontal or vice versa. And that just comes with experimentation. Question number 10. What effect does multi-path propagation have on data transmissions? Well, you got to think multi-path propagation. If they're subtracting from each other, you're going to lose a signal. And it may drop to where it doesn't get picked up. So your answer is error rates are likely to increase. Question 11 in sub-element A is which region of the atmosphere can refract or bend HF and VHF radio waves? And that is the ionosphere. And refract means to, you know, if you shine a light in water, what happens to it? It gets bent just a little bit. So that's what refraction is. It's a bending Question number 12. What is the effect of fog and rain on signals in the 10 meter and 6 meter bands? Well, 10 meters is HF, 6 meters is VHF, though just barely above the uh, HF range. And for these, there is little effect. They just pass right on through. So this has completed our questions for technician element three sub element a and i hope that you tune back in when the next video drops i hope this is helping those that want to become technician licensed exam uh, licensed amateur radio operators and don't stop at technician take it on go to go to general now i'm not saying go to extra that's pretty daggum tough but Definitely, we want, we want you on the HF bands for sure. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. 73 from W1RCP.